Hey everybody, Bob Gnarly 69 here coming to you from your old back room. Happy New Year 2020. Thank goodness 2019's over with. I'm done with it. Alright, I invited you to come join me this evening. We're going to load us up some 357 Magnum. Um, I've got most of the stuff done. I've got my brass primed and I've got it flared. Um, didn't have to resize it. But anyway, I uh, have to do a little bit of adjusting on my bullet seating and my crimp. But uh, other than that, you know, nothing else left to do other than put powder in them and uh, set the bullets. So join me. I'm going to be using, as you can see, accurate number nine empty container. But I still keep it up here on the table with me. <coughs> And I also lost my little label, it fell out. Sometimes I'll, by mistake, I'll put the uh, container on the shelf and uh, I'll still have powder in my throat. And, you know, it generally won't be much, but I will. And I'll forget what it is. I won't come back here for a couple of days and I'll forget what kind of powder it is. So I always make a little label and I put it up here in my throat. You can't see it on the camera. But um, I've just got my throw dialed in, and we're going to be using a undisclosed amount of um, oops of uh, Acura number nine on these 357 rounds. Yeah, I take that thing apart and clean it. It's starting to get seized up, as you can see. Maybe you can't see. I don't know. Now, yeah, I'm just a tad high, but then again, too, I'm not sitting on a level surface either. But that's okay. It'll be a plus P round. That's all right. Anyway, I'm using, uh, like I said earlier, Acura number nine. And uh, they're going to be some pretty hot rounds. Also, I'm using. As you can see up there, Starline Brass. I like Starline Brass. This is new brass. As you can see, this hasn't been primed. But um, I like Starline. I don't shoot hardly anything. I don't buy anything but Starline. Uh, as far as raw brass or new brass goes, if I buy 45 rounds or 357 rounds, 38, 454 Casul rounds, or somebody gives me some of one of those calibers. You know, if the brass is in good shape, I'll reload it. But if I'm going to put my money out there for brass, I shoot Starline. It's good. Um, not going to get into a Starline commercial. They don't pay me to. And I pay a pretty good penny for the brass. But then again, too, you know, when you're going to. Uh, use it you want to be able to reuse it more often all right as you can see i'm using right here there's my starline brass move this over here i'm using 180 grain xtp from hornady okay and i'm not going to get into the case overall length and all that stuff with you and this is the reason why let me do this up here now, I'm no professional at this. I'm a novice at best, uh, an amateur, a novice, I don't know. You know you it don't take a whole lot to uh, figure out what's going on here. But let me show you something. If you're reloading and, your case over, and you get concerned about your case overall length, look right here, okay? This is your crimp groove. You put that case up inside that crimp groove and you crimp it right there, you're gonna be fine if you're shooting a revolver, okay? Or even a, um, a rifle. If you're using 357 and you crimp in that groove right there, 
You crimp in that groove, you're good. All right, hang on a second. All right, sorry for that delay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started here. Like I said before, I'm using uh, Starline 357 brass, and I'm using Hornady XTP 180 grain hollow point. Okay, I think you're bonded, jacketed. Anyway, as I said before, the crimp groove is where my aim is. I've got to adjust my bullet cedar and I've got to adjust my factory crimp also. Um, I try to start, and it's kind of weird to a lot of you maybe, but I, I do weird, I do things weird anyway. But anyway, I do what works for me. You do what you want to do, and when you start reloading and doing anything you're doing, you know, more power to you, brother, because, you know, you follow me, and uh, you may wind up on the reef somewhere. Um, Got my little reload box here, you know, put them in after I get everything pressed up. But I do things different. I'm using Lee, okay, value auto indexing. Okay, press here. It's a four stage. Or I have a four stage wheel on it, or die holder. You can see. Alright, so. And I use it for 38 special as well. This is what we're going to be loading. And, uh, these are 357 and these are 38s. I've got a different round I'm going to put on, three, uh, on those 38s. I've got some of these little FTX Hornady bullets. I, I don't like them, especially for reloading. Um, but anyway, that's a different story. <coughs> I'm using so much powder. I am using Acker number nine. And for my own reasons, I'm not going to say how much I'm using because they're going to be plus P loads. Okay. You load and shoot at your own risk. You don't do what I do. All right. But I'm going to go through working on the, um, the bullet seats and the bullet, uh, crimp factory crimp also. <laughs> Okay, and if some of you are watching this and you're thinking about getting into reloading and you're still trying to get your head wrapped around the uh, parts, okay, this is my die holder, okay, this is for a um, auto indexing uh, press like I have right here, okay, again, it's a four die, uh, this is my dap uh, decapping and resizing die, this one right here. You move over, and Hornady uses the powder through, okay, flare, and powder through die. And this is to flare the mouth of your case for the bullet seat into it. This is my bullet seating die, okay, this one right here, powder through die and flaring die. Okay, and, and this is so that you can seat your bullet down into it, okay, because when you resize it, uh, with the decapping die right here, it's going to be the diameter of the bullet itself, and you're just not going to be able to put it into it. So you won't be able to stick it into it. And anyway, I'll show you more about that. I've already got these flared, and I'll talk to you about that more in a minute. All right, here's my bullet seating die. Okay, this is the die you're going to use to uh, get the depth of the bullet into your brass, and it also has a factory roll die, or it has a roll crimp, rather, right here uh, that comes along with it. And I use it, but uh, because I shoot a 357 and a 454 Casul, I really like the idea of having a factory crimp die. Um, so far, these Lee products have served me well. The only thing I've had mess up on me was my uh, powder throw that's automatic that I use on my 9 millimeters, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm a very hands-on person, and this works for me as it is. All right, now this is a piece of, as you can see, I've got it primed, and I don't have a piece out here that's not flared. But if, I don't know if you can see that at the top, but the very top of it, back up maybe it'll focus on it and can you see at the very top of it where it comes up the body of the shell all right it flares a little bit at the top that's so i can do this okay 
That's what I want to do. I want it to be flared just enough to where that round will stick in there, but not so flared out so much to where it looks like a, a trumpet. All right. I've already got my throw set up. And um, let's go ahead and start <clears throat> um, adjusting the bullet depth on this. Now, remember what I said. I'm not going to pull my calipers out. Huh? Well, actually, the camera's sitting on my caliper box. But I'm not shooting an auto loader. Now, when I shoot my 9mm or 45 APC, then yes, I, I pull those calipers out and I measure. Um, it's very critical for auto loaders. But because I shoot revolvers more than I do anything else and lever guns, um, then I just I go to the crimp. All right, as long as you're in that crimp, you are good to go, brothers and sisters. Oh, okay, here we go. We're gonna start with this piece of brass here, and pretty much you can almost look at it too as your first piece of brass and your first bullet is almost sacrificial until you get your head pretty well wrapped around what you're going to do. All right, now I put, I've already got my powder in here, so I don't need to run it through my uh, flare. Bring it up into my die, and I feel for what's in there, okay? Go back, and I look. I don't have a bullet in it, but I wanted to see what the die was going to do, okay? See how deep my die was setting on it, to take that little bit of flare out of it. Remember what I said earlier about it being a, um, having a, um, see, and, and now my bullet, it'll fit in there real good. Good and tight, good and straight. But So now I know I'm good to go with the depth of my, back that out a little bit more. I'm good to go for the most part with the case. Okay. Sorry, I was checking to make sure my bullet. All right, so now what I do, I've got the bullet pushed in just a little bit, but uh, I don't want to screw around and get too much on it. So what I do now is I back my bullet um, <clears throat> depth off until it's just not touching it at all, okay? So I got a little bit way, I got about halfway more to go on the bullet itself. But I uh, bring it back up here and I bring it down. I look down at my handle and I bring it down and I see my handle come up. Boop, boop. As I turn that, I push that out of a little bit. Okay. And that took about a third of what I need to do out of it. So I come down on my bullet cedar again. About a third of that again. A little more, a little more, a little more. I'm at the band, give just a little bit more. And we tweak it. All right, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. You see, you can see just a tiny amount of those little grooves that are in that crimp band. I can actually get my thumbnail in there and I can feel them a little bit. But I barely can. There's no room for wiggling or anything. It's tight. And I got a nice roll crimp on the top of it up there. I could shoot it like that. Okay. But these are not just standard loads. These are plus P loads. So now I'm going to come over here to my factory crimp and bring them around. We'll come up. I'm all the way down. I'm not touching my case at all. So what I did, what I've done is I backed my crimp all the way out to where it's not touching my case. Now I walk again. I'm looking down at my handle and I adjust it until it comes down and I see my handle move. And as soon as I see my handle move just a little bit and I can feel it up here too, I know I've made contact with my case. So what I do is I look at my handle and you turn it. And you can get the handle to move a little bit, but at the same time, you're crimping this a little bit. So do that, look at it, give it a mild push. I'm 
not happy with that. I want to go just a tad more. I like that. Okay. Got a nice factory crimp on it. My bullet seat. His depth is right. It's time to get kicking. What happened to our music? Hang on. All right, we're in business now. We'll start with these 357 rounds. And, uh, sit here, boo. Here we go. Ugh. My powder throw is starting to get seized up. I got powder in it and all, so it don't want to, it don't want to, uh, it's getting tight. It's getting stiff. All right, got my bullet in there. See how it just sticks in there, but it's not it's not down in there. It's kind of, I try to get it as straight up and down in it also as I can at the time. Come back around to my bullet seat. Crimp it down. Look good. Got a nice crimp on it really from there. Bring it over here to my factory crimp. And I'm happy camper. powder after you've resized, decapped, and uh, reprimered and flared powder. Butai. Seat the bullet. Crimp the bullet. Put the bullet in the box and then go shoot it. My kids gave me one of them Surrey boxes for Christmas. <laughs> I ain't real sure about Surrey. Uh, she asked me the other day if I wanted to hear a joke. I'm like, sure, tell me a joke. I don't remember what it was, but she didn't tell me another one. I didn't laugh. I think I might have hurt her feelings. Oh, hope everybody got what they wanted from Santa Claus for Christmas. I did. I got what I needed. Got what I wanted. I needed some socks and some shirts and some jeans. And they were all, fortunately... They were all the right size and uh, got me some boom boom. Unfortunately, it was two sizes too big, but hey, I'm not complaining much. Anyway, i get you in there. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Let me get this pressed in. I'm going to pause you and run and get something real quick. I just thought of something. Hang on just a sec. I'm back. I don't want to get my hands in the way. <clears throat> this is my Taurus Model 66 357 38 Special. I had a gentleman scold me the other day because I took too long to get into the introduction of my video and that my hands were always in the way of the pistol when I was showing it. Uh, brother, obviously you only watched one of my videos because I have several videos uh, with my 357. Okay, here it is. I have a hog grip on it. Okay. I uh, don't see. Where's the other grip? I don't see the other grip. It was over there. It's probably in the safe. All right. I have a hog grip on it. Okay. It is matte black. I don't want to turn it around yet because I got it, I got it loaded. It is loaded right now. And as you can see, the hammer, right there, you see the hammer? As you can see, the safety is on. There's the other side. 
I love the hose grip. I really do. I'll show you the back in a minute, but I'm going to load it first. Okay. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way. I don't want my fingers in the way. I love this pistol. I absolutely adore this pistol. Um, you know, simple as that. Okay, give you a robber's view of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Top view. Okay, as you can see, it is unloaded. Okay, so I am going to cover myself with it in order to show you the back of the pistol. Okay, the only thing I don't like about the hose grip is I do have that tiny little gap down at the bottom of it. And if I pull it up to where it's um, tight, tight, um, shit, what did it do? It did something, but it, 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 it did something up here. But, oh, I know what it was. It, it, it swells it. You know, if you bring it up so tight right here to where it matches the bottom, it swells it out away from it on each side. So I'm okay with that, you know. Um, I'm okay with it. I take it apart, clean it real good and all, so it's okay. There's the seven shot. All right. Give you another shot of the back. It comes matte black, all right, simple as that. I don't know if you can see those little pink spot things I painted onto it. All right, when you try to line up that matte black rear sight, which is also adjustable for elevation and windage, to the matte black front sight, which I also painted pink, that thing disappears. It disappears. So, I'm going uh, to make one more of these bullets, and then I'm going to reload this thing and get it out of my way. It's still unloaded. I'm going to move it over here out of the way anyway. But um, I wanted to show the gentleman that, and I apologize to you for... Um, you know, taking so long to get to something. And um, I don't do videos for anybody, but really for me and the people who enjoy them. And so if you don't, if you don't enjoy it, man, you know, God bless you. Uh, you know, you don't have to watch it. For those of you that do watch the videos and enjoy them, give me a thumbs up. And um, for those of you who have not subscribed, subscribe. And I'm going to leave it with you now. You ain't going to sit here and watch me press these bullets all night long. I talked to you about the Lee Auto uh, Indexing Press here. The, auto, the Lee Value Auto Indexing Press. <clears throat> I can't tell you if it's better or not than any other ones that are out there because I've never compared it to anything. But I enjoy it. I like it. I reload uh, 45 Long Colt and 454 Casul. Matter of fact, I just, uh, I just finished pressing these bad boys. Okay, right before I began this video about the 357. And okay, 454 Casul again. Star, oops, Starline Brass. So. I like the hands-on approach to it. I weigh, I've got one of those auto thingies that go on it. The auto, the perfect powder throw thing, the safety powder scale. I don't know. But um, anyway, with all that said, I'll quit wasting any more of your time. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the Second Amendment. Um, all you fellows out there that's under the age of 18 that are turning 18 this year, and for those of you who are 18, if you have not already, register for Selective Service. Um, register for the draft. Um, don't be a panty waste little bitch and run to Canada. Uh, I'm not going to get into politics. Au revoir, mi amigos. I love you. I mean it. 
Bob Gnarly 69 here coming to you from the back room. Thought I'd let you join me while I screwed around with my press and uh, mashed up a couple of 357 rounds. Y'all take care now, you hell.